Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a reading vlog. I'm going to be reading four books in this vlog. Two of them are going to be Japanese horror or thrillers and the other two are going to be Korean horror and thrillers. I say horror and thriller because I think some of them kind of blur the lines a little bit and when you look them up they're categorized as both so I'm just lumping them into like one little category here. But I'm a big fan of Japanese horror movies. I haven't seen a ton of them, but the ones that I have seen I've really loved. I haven't seen as many Korean horror movies, but the ones that I have seen I really really liked. So I think we know that I do tend to pick up a lot of Japanese horror books. I love Confessions. That's one of my favorite books of all time. I just absolutely adore that book and I have a ton of other ones that I've just really really enjoyed. So I wanted to do like a dedicated reading vlog and I don't believe that I've read any Korean horror or thriller books. I don't believe so. I could be wrong, but from what I remember, I don't believe I've read any Korean horror or thriller books. So that's why I decided to combine them into one vlog. So let me show you the books that I will be reading in this vlog. For the two that are Japanese, the first one is going to be Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, which I am very, very, very excited about. So many people have recommended this book to me and it's been sitting on my shelves for so long so I'm glad to kind of have an excuse to finally open this one up. I don't know too much about it. I know that this little this little hedgehog is the main character's friend and it supposedly talks and that it's supposed to be kind of a disturbing wild ride of a book but that's all I know. And the other one is Now You're One of Us by Asa Nonami which I've heard compared to Rosemary's Baby, but again, I don't know too much about this one. Uh, I believe it's like a suspenseful gothic horror thriller, I think. That's what it's been described as, so that's all I really know about this one. And then for the Korean books, I have The Good Son by Zhang Yu Zhang, which I think I hauled earlier this year and Again, I don't know too much about this one. I think it's a like psychological crime thriller, I believe, from what I have read online. I think it sounds really interesting and I'm excited to read this one. And then the final book that I will be reading is Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. I've heard quite a bit about this one. I feel like this one is going to be the one that's the most out of my comfort zone. This is a short story collection, but I believe they're like sci-fi stories. On the inside it says it's a genre-defying collection of short stories blurring the lines between magical realism, horror, and science fiction. So I'm a little bit nervous about this one. If any of them are going to be really out of like my realm, <laughs> I think it's going to be this one just because magical realism and sci-fi are two genres that I have a little bit of trouble with. Uh, magical realism, it'll really just depend on how it's done, but sci-fi could really just be hit or miss for me, so I'm nervous but excited to read this one. And yeah, those are the four books that I will be talking about in this video. I hope you all are excited. I know I'm really excited. I hope they're all really good and I hope I enjoy them all, but let's get in to the reading. Hey friends, welcome to a check-in. So I'm here to talk about Earthlings. I'm about 54% in, I believe. I'm on chapter four, page like 135. And I'm devouring this very quickly. It is going so quickly. Like I'm just like flying through this book and I'm really enjoying it. However, I can see why people are calling this a very disturbing book. It's really, really, really sad and like, it's kind of funny at times, I guess. There's just like a lot of like really, really like traumatic things happening in this book and like the story as a whole is just really sad and it's very weird too, but like I'm honestly finding it more sad than anything else. Like I get the weird parts, but the most overwhelming emotion I have is just like I feel really sad and like kind of depressed while reading this, I'll be honest. It's really hard to explain this 
plot. So I'm gonna give you like the briefest plot description. Basically this book is about Natsuki who is 11 years old and her best friend is this little hedgehog here who talks to her and she believes he's from another planet and that he's there to help her save the earth and she believes in magic and it sounds very weird. A lot of the weirdness is understandable, I think. So when I'm reading it, I'm not like super weirded out. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I guess that's that makes sense, you know? And I'm very interested. I'm kind of waiting to see what's happening because we've had a time jump and now Natsuki is not 11 anymore. She is 34. So I have a feeling, you know, things are gonna go in a direction. I don't really know. It's a very dark book. It's very disturbing in multiple areas. Like, it just, there's a lot of things happening in this book that I just find to be so messed up. But, like, I'm enjoying it. Like, I don't want to sound, I don't want it to sound like I'm beating up the book for what it's doing. I like the book. I'm really invested. I like the writing. I like the storytelling. I like where it's going. I'm very interested, but it's just, it's, you know, it's messed up. It's, 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 it's hard to read at times. You know, it's, it's a little bit hard. Some of the subject matter is a lot. I can definitely see people needing trigger warnings for this one because there are a lot of topics touched on that could definitely be... I just don't think everyone will like some of the things involved in this book or want to read it, which is totally, you know, fine and understandable. But overall, I'm having a good time with it. I'm really liking it. I think it's very interesting, but I really enjoy Japanese horror in general. This is more of a magical realism horror, I believe. I saw magical realism tagged on Goodreads, so I have a feeling that's going to come into play now more now that I'm halfway through. So I will definitely be interested to see how I feel about magical realism because sometimes it works for me and sometimes it really doesn't. But overall, I'm literally devouring this book. I'm reading it so quickly. I'm very invested. I have high hopes that I'm gonna really like, you know, like this one at the end. So yeah, I guess we'll see. That's all I really have, you know, thoughts for right now. It's it's not a lot because I can't really say too much because I don't want to give anything away, but so far I'm fully invested and I'm excited to see where it's heading. So I will update you once I finish this one. Hey friends, welcome to another check-in. I have finished Earthlings and I have some thoughts. I'm going to tell you what I think and give you kind of my tentative rating of it as of right now. So in my last check-in, I said I was reading it really, really quickly. I was flying through it. It was just kind of like... I don't know, I was just speeding through this book. I feel like it just went by so freaking quick. Now, I will say that I have seen a lot of people saying this is a very weird, weird horror book. Like, it's very kind of like off the rails, and I do agree. I will say that the first half of the book, which I preferred to the second half of the book, the first half focuses a lot on, like, trauma and the reason why things escalate in the second half I think so much. The first half just focused on things that I like found really interesting and like more horrific to me personally because it was more real world horror which is obviously something that I tend to gravitate towards most so I think the first half really worked for me. Don't get me wrong the first half is still really weird but I feel like that weirdness is a little bit toned down and then when you get to the second half it's just kind of like wild bananas whoa what's going on and I didn't hate it like I didn't dislike it because sometimes I've said this before but weird horror I think can lean too weird for me and I think this book would go that direction it would be too weird however the first half laid the groundwork where I was able to kind of understand why the second half was so weird even though it's like it's understandable why it's weird it's still really weird like when you're reading it, you're like what the heck is going on like it gets it gets crazy I do have to say I really like the messaging of this book it's <laughs> I feel like it's a very easy message to understand if you're like I guess paying attention. I feel like if you're not really paying attention, you could miss it. But I feel like the messaging throughout the book is very strong, especially about like 
society and your roles in society, your role as, you know, people, individuals, um, women. I feel like it's very obvious what kind of, you know, message and like what we're talking about, like societal roles and stuff. It's just kind of hidden behind different terms, hidden behind these little weird moments in the book, but it's definitely very obvious what the author is talking about. And I did like it. There was a lot of things I was agreeing with. It's just funny because <laughs> the way it's like explained in the book, it sounds so absurd, but it's really not as absurd. It's just the way that the author is explaining things just feels like that. But I did, I did like it. I did enjoy my time with this book. I will say the ending felt a little... I didn't hate the ending. I'll say that. I didn't hate the ending. I don't think the ending's bad. I think the ending is just very odd. It's not really what I expected from this book. I feel like the ending kind of came out of left field and I wasn't really expecting it. I didn't hate the direction it took. I didn't hate it. It just felt random. <laughs> like when it starts happening you're like, huh? I felt like I was reading and I was reading and then the ending happened and I was kind of like, huh. I mean, okay, I'm not like upset by it. It was just so bizarre <laughs> that I was like, all right, <laughs> I guess this fits the, the book. It, it fits it fits where we're going, it, it fits it. Another thing is I feel like this little hedgehog here, this little guy, right, he's involved in the story. He's our main character's little friend. And I thought he was gonna be more of like a big, big prominent role. And like, he is, he is, he has his purpose, he has his role, but I just thought that like, the way people describe this book or like what I've I've read of this book, it just sounds like the hedgehog is so like so in your face and I just felt like, oh, it wasn't really there. But I did still like, you know, his role in the story. I liked that. Had the book kept up the real world, real life horrificness and like trauma, I felt like it would have been similar to Confessions and Penance, which I think we all know are two books that I really, really enjoy and they are definitely more like realistic, which is I think why I enjoyed this first half so much because it is still weird and a little out there, but I, I enjoyed those like realistic moments. So had the book kept that up, I think this could have been a five star, but based off of like overall, I'd probably give it a four star. I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I just don't think it was like, you know, absolutely perfect in my opinion. It wasn't like a five star book, but definitely a four star, if not a 4.5. I could see myself rounding it up to a 4.5 because I did really enjoy it, but yeah, I, I'm glad I read it. It's been sitting on my shelves for so long and so many people have recommended it to me. It definitely is a disturbing horror book. I think it's just kind of, it's kind of camouflaged sometimes by like the weird oddness of this story, but uh, it's definitely a disturbing book. It's definitely there and I could see myself, you know, putting it on a disturbing horror book recommendation list, which is good because I am going to do a second part to that video that I did a while ago. So I definitely would include this because it is very disturbing and there are definitely triggers for this book. So I would definitely recommend looking up triggers before you read this, but I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that I finally gave it a read. So next up, I'm going to start The Good Son, which is a Korean thriller. I'm very excited because I don't read too many Korean horror or thriller books. This might, this might be my first actually. I think I tend to gravitate towards more Japanese horror and thrillers, so I think this will be my first time reading a Korean thriller and I'm very excited. I don't know too much about this book. I've heard some things but very little so I don't really know what I'm getting into. I know the bare minimum plot so I'm kind of excited going into this one blind so I'm going to start it and I will report back. Hello friends! I am back with another update. So I have started The Good Son. I'm actually fairly into this book. I'm really close to finishing it. I'm on page uh, 235, part 4, and I'm enjoying this one, but let me give you a synopsis on what this book is about. So our main character is 25, and he has suffered from seizures and kind of these memory problems for a majority of his life. And one morning, he wakes up to the smell of, like, blood, that metallic, like, 
blood smell. He wakes up to it and he ends up finding his mother's dead body at the bottom of the stairs. So the book is about him going on this journey to try and uncover the truth about what happened to his mom. So this book is a good old unreliable narrator, which I actually really enjoy. I like unreliable narrators, but if you don't, you might not like this. I will say it's a little bit different than typical unreliable narrator books. I can't really explain why because it's a little bit of... A spoiler but it feels very different to me. The book at the very beginning I had this idea of what this book was gonna be because I didn't know too much about it. I went in kind of blind and I haven't heard too many people I know talking about it so I didn't expect a lot from it so I went in and I started reading and I had this like idea in my head of what this book was going to be. I will say that it's completely turned me on my head because it's not at all what I expected. <laughs> like, not at all. It's actually much different than I expected it, and it's gone in a completely different direction than I initially thought it was going to go in. It's a very... I don't want to say different kind of thriller, but kind of. It's a lot different than thrillers that I tend to pick up, and not like because of the writing, just because of the way it's gone. I feel like this isn't the typical thriller that I usually read. But honestly, that's all I have to say about it. I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it. I don't think it's like a five star. I could be wrong. I mean, I'll, I'll let the ending see how I feel about it because I have two different endings in my head on how this book is gonna go and I don't know which one I prefer so if it follows like my theory and does pick one of those two endings it'll just depend on how it's done to see how I feel about it it could just blow all my theories out of the water and do something really different and if it does and I really really like it it could bump this up to a five star because right now it's feeling like a very solid four star. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking it. I feel like it's gripping. It's interesting. It's surprising. It's keeping me on my toes, but I'm not like, you know, like head over heels in love with it as a five star would be. So it's feeling like a solid, a solid four star. So we'll see how the ending really changes my mind or keeps it the same. I will say the only thing I don't love about this book, and this is just a me problem, this is just something that I don't like, this book is split into parts, so I'm on part four right now, but there are no chapters. So as someone who likes chapters because I can't stop reading in the middle of a chapter, I have to finish a chapter to like pause or take a break or like put my book down. With this book I can't do that. I mean I can, but like from part one to part two to part three, it's like a good like maybe 40 some pages. I'm not really keeping track, but it feels like a good like 40 some pages in every part. So that's frustrating because as someone who doesn't like to stop in the middle of the book, I have to read the entire part to feel comfortable with like stopping and it's just kind of bugging me. I don't like those like really long-winded chapters, even though they're not chapters, it just feels like they're chapters, but just like excessively long, and that's just something that I don't typically enjoy, so it's, it's a little bothersome, but that's pretty much my main problem with the book. It's not really that big. It's not that, you know, it's not that intense. It's not that crazy, but that's like my biggest complaint. Otherwise, I'm really enjoying it, and I am really liking it. Very interested to see how this one ends. So I will update you when I finish it and tell you my final thoughts and then I will move on to the next book in this vlog. Hello friends! I am back and I have finished The Good Son so I am here to tell you my thoughts. Overall, I actually really did enjoy this. I feel like if you're looking for a good psychological thriller, I would recommend this. I think some people would say this is very predictable because it it is after a certain part, like, I would say about halfway through, I feel like you kind of know where this is going, especially the ending. I said earlier in my update that I had, like, two theories on how I thought this book was gonna end. It did end up going in one of the directions, but I still liked the ending. <laughs> I feel like even though it was predictable, it wasn't, like, really bad. Again, I'm not super surprised that it is a little bit predictable because I feel like with the kind of story, especially with an unreliable narrator who has like memory issues, I feel like that's a very typical trope and this plot 
it does do some unique things, but I would say overall it is a pretty standard thriller story. I did really like it though. I would say overall it's a solid four star. I wouldn't give it higher than a four star just because it didn't fully stand out in my opinion. It didn't do anything super crazy different that would make me want to give it a five star. But for the type of story that I got while reading this, I think it was pretty like solid, a pretty strong thriller plot. So I liked it. I, I enjoyed it. I had fun reading it. It wasn't too boring or too slow or too like all over the place. I felt like it was pretty easy to understand. I will say at the beginning of the book I had a little bit of trouble like focusing. I'm not saying that the writing was like dense. I was just like I was having trouble like concentrating on what was going on but once I got into like the groove of reading this book I felt like I did a lot better and it wasn't it wasn't as bad. I think it was just that like initial start. Sometimes that happens when I read like new authors that I've you know never read from before. Sometimes those first few like pages can be a little bit harder for me to get into but yeah after I kind of surpassed that little like hump I would say that you know it was pretty easy reading and I didn't have those problems after that. I wouldn't say this story was like super super tense however I would say there were moments where I was like oh what's gonna happen? So there were tense moments but I wouldn't say the overall story was like super super tense or like super thrilling but it did have those moments of that. But yeah super glad I read it. I had a lot of fun. I think that it's a really solid thriller. If you're looking for you know a Korean author to check out or this sounds like something that you enjoy I would recommend it. The next book I'm going to start reading is Now You're One of Us. I have had this on my radar for a really long time. This book was actually super hard for me to track down for a while. I believe for months it was out of print and then it recently started getting printed again. I think it like got reprinted. So it took me forever to finally get a copy of this book but I'm really glad that I finally did. I don't know a lot about this one either but I have heard that it's compared to Rosemary's Baby which I really really enjoyed. So I'm hoping that I will enjoy this. It's going to be kind of like a slow creeping gothic story I think. I don't know. I'm very interested. Hopefully I enjoy it and I will check in once I start reading this one. Well hello friends. Fancy seeing you here. I have another update for you all. I'm actually almost done with Now You're One of Us. I'm very 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 close to finishing like really 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 close to finishing. I'm on chapter 24 page 190. I believe it's like 79% into the book so very very close and I I don't know how I feel about this book. I do like it. I just have mixed feelings right now. I'm hoping that the ending will sort those feelings out but let me give you a brief synopsis. So this book follows the main character Noriko and she has just married into this family and the family is pretty ideal. I feel like as far as in-laws go you know she won the lottery. These in-laws are super nice and they really seem to like her and they want to make her a part of the family and it just seems like everything is going really well. However, something's a little off with this family. You know, they have a very, you know, nice presentation. They are very agreeable and, you know, they want to make her life easy. However, there are some weird things. There are these like 1 a.m. kind of meetings that the family holds while Noriko is asleep, so she's not invited to them. And, you know, that's a little strange. The great-grandmother, who's almost 100 years old, also has these visitors kind of pop in and out of the home. Noriko doesn't really know why these visitors are here or what, you know, the great-grandmother is doing for them. She just knows that they come in and they come out. Another thing that happens that kind of, you know, sets off Noriko's red flags is there is this family that is renting from her in-laws and something, you know, happens with 
this family and it sets off Noriko's alarms and she starts feeling a little bit suspicious of her new family. So a lot of reviews I had seen compared this to Rosemary's Baby and I do agree it has a lot of elements that are similar to Rosemary's Baby. I think my biggest... <laughs> My biggest complaint with this book is the main character. Look, I know that Noriko is going through it, right? She's got some things happening, but she's just so weird in how she reacts to certain things. I just kind of want her to pick aside. <laughs> she kind of flip-flops a lot through the book where sometimes everything that's like not adding up she's very weird about and she wants to investigate and then there are moments because she kind of loses it in front of the family and you know they talk her down from the ledge and then she's like oh no this is the greatest family ever I'm so honored to be a part of it I want to be a part of this family like how could I suspect them of anything I just kind of want her to pick a side. I'm not gonna judge her. Look, I'm just the reader. If she wants to be a part of this family, even though, you know, there's some weird stuff going on, I'm not gonna judge her for that. If she wants to look into what's going on and, you know, figure out the secrets and, you know, try to like really deep dive into what's going on, I will also support that. But I need her to pick a side. <laughs> I need her to stop flip-flopping. I need her to just decide if she wants to be a part of the family or if she's going to look into them and investigate because this flip-flopping is driving me insane. And I just wish she was better at hiding her feelings. Like, <laughs> she she lets them read it on her so quickly. Like, she'll have something in her head like, this isn't, this isn't adding up. This is weird. This is not, something's wrong. And then it's all over her face. And I'm like, same, but... <laughs> now they know that you're suspicious of them, so therefore they're going to make sure that you aren't suspicious of them anymore. She lets them, like, talk her down, and, like, I get it, but also it's a little infuriating as a reader to read it because it's just the same thing. She suspects them, they talk her down. She suspects them, they talk her down. She suspects them, they talk her down. And I'm like, okay, I just... I need something else. I need a, I need, I need, I need a little bit, I need something else. My other thing is we just kind of found out a big part of the plot, I guess. I think, I, it's not that surprising to me. I kind of already had a semi feeling what was going on. But if that's it, if this is like the big reveal and nothing else is going on, I'm gonna be a little infuriated because to me, this is like super dramatic for no reason. <laughs> I feel like there should be more to the story. So I'm hoping in these like 50 pages that I have left, I'm gonna like uncover something else because if this is it, I'm gonna be like, okay. A little, a little anticlimactic. But so far I am enjoying it. It's a really quick read. I'm like flying through it. It's taking me like no time at all to, you know, get really into it. So, you know, I'm excited to see what happens and hopefully, hopefully it has a good ending because I, I really need this ending to be like punchy and like, really really good to make me love this book so I will come back once I finish it and then we will be on to the last book for this vlog. Hello hello back with another update so I finished Now You're One of Us and I have to say that the ending did kind of tie everything together for me and I really actually liked the ending. I thought the ending was kind of just off the wall and funny and not really funny I shouldn't say funny funny but like it kind of made me laugh <laughs> because it was just so uh weird and crazy I feel like I should have seen it coming to be honest like I really feel like I should have seen it coming but I think I was so distracted by the main character like flip-flopping between her believing the family and not believing the family that I wasn't really paying attention to some of the signs so the ending kind of did surprise me and yeah I mean I'm kind of happy about that so I think overall I am I am gonna give it a four star which <laughs> means we're three for three with the four stars. Every other book has gotten four stars in this vlog. I don't know what that is but yeah I enjoyed this one. I liked it. I I you know, it might be a low four stars. I feel like I'm being a little generous. I probably should give it like a 3.5, but I'm gonna give it a four because I did like the ending and I thought the ending was kind of just, <laughs> just funny. <laughs> I liked the ending. I thought it would kind of just worked. So I'm gonna have to give it a four.
However, <laughs> I have started the last book for this vlog and that is Cursed Bunny. It is a short story collection. It's supposed to be a combination of magical realism, science fiction, and horror. I, mm, okay, I knew I wasn't going to love this <laughs> because magical realism is very hit or miss for me. Unfortunately, I sometimes love it. Sometimes I just can't stand it. It just depends on how the author does it. Science fiction is usually a no-go for me. I don't love science fiction. I didn't realize what these stories were when I had bought the short story collection. I think I just kind of bought it because I was trying to get more Korean horror. So... I didn't really realize it until after I had gotten it and that's why I've been putting this collection off is because I just don't think I'm gonna love it and honestly I'm not having the best time. So I am about 108 pages in. I believe I've read one, two, three, four, five stories. Uh, the first three I wasn't the biggest fan of. The first three I just didn't really care for. The first two, I, I liked the messaging of them. I just didn't really care for how they were written personally. The third story, it was boring. I skipped a lot of it. I wasn't really paying attention. And then the fourth and fifth, I liked enough. I thought they were okay. I didn't hate them. Um, I was able to like actually read them and, <laughs> you know, follow along. So I consider that a win, but I believe there are 10 stories in here. So I have five more to go and I'm just, I'm just not like obsessed. <laughs> I'm not loving it. <laughs> and I'm really sad about it because I want to like it. I just, I think it's a personal thing. Like I'm just not big on like these kinds of genre mixes. And so I'm just having a hard time loving these stories. So unfortunately so far it's not you know, it's not amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm reading it. I'm gonna try not to DNF it. Um, I think, I think I'll do more if I just hate a story or maybe not hate a story, but if I just can't get into a story, I might just skim it and then move on. I'll let you guys know. Obviously, I already told you I skimmed the third story because I wasn't interested in it. So I'll let you know if I do skim any others, but um, yeah, I'm not going to try to DNF it. I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of glad I saved this for last because <laughs> I had such a good, you know, a good four star streak happening. <laughs> I guess I kind of going to have to end on a on a more rough note, but uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at so far. I'm going to read the rest of the night and finish this tomorrow because I'm going to edit this vlog tomorrow, so I will finish this one up and let you know how I feel about it. Hello friends and welcome to the last check-in. So I finished Cursed Bunny and I have very mixed thoughts about this book because earlier in the last check-in I said that I had read the first five stories and three of them I didn't really care for and the other two I liked enough. In the last five I would say that I only really didn't like one and then another one I felt like was just okay but the other three I did really like enjoy and I felt like they suited me a bit more. So it kind of feels like <laughs> it was 50-50. It feels like five of them I wasn't really a fan of and five of them I felt like were pretty good. So I'm a little mixed up on how I feel about this one. I feel like I'm between a 3 and a 3.5. I just feel like I can't give it higher than that because of the stories that I didn't tend to like overly enjoy. I think this one just wasn't really for me and I kind of should have known that going into it and I feel like I did after I'd already purchased it that this wasn't going to be for me but I feel like I didn't really know anything about it when I bought it which is a gamble that I take usually when I don't look into books or read too much about them. It's just kind of you know, the game I play because I like to go in blind. So for me, I think this one just didn't really work. But I think that if you like books or short story collections with magical realism, science fiction, and horror vibes like all together, I think you'll probably like this. I think unfortunately for me, the mix just didn't really 
work, which isn't really surprising if you know me and you know my reading taste. I'm not super big on science fiction, like at all, like I just really don't like science fiction. And then magical realism is hard, it's just, it's a toss up if I'll like it or if I'll hate it. And so I think for this one, I think it just didn't really it didn't really mesh with my taste. But to be honest, this is the only one out of the four books I read that wasn't like a huge hit or that I really, really enjoyed. So I'm not too disappointed by that. And I knew going into it that I was probably not going to like it as much as the other books. Overall though, I mean, three books actually ended up being pretty good and I really liked them and I had a lot of fun reading them and I feel like they were good reads and yeah, I'm just, I'm happy I read these. So I'm a little sad that this one didn't work for me, but I think I'm just not the target audience and I think I'm not the person that this is like, you know, geared towards, but I do think a lot of people will love this one. And luckily enough for me, uh, for Escape the Readathon, I was mood reading the whole time, so I got to count all four books and didn't have to worry about any prompts, which was super, super nice because I was really worried that if we did reach the door and we got to prompts, I was gonna have a hard time trying to read these and be able to make them fit for prompts. So I actually got really lucky with being able to mood read for this entire vlog, which I am very, very happy about. And that's it. That was me reading four Japanese and Korean horror and thriller books. I had a lot of fun. I think from the books that I've read in the past and these ones, I think I can just clearly see that I am a fan of Japanese and Korean horror. Although this was my first time reading Korean horror and one well, Korean horror thriller, whatever. One worked out and one didn't, but I think it's just a good indicator that I am a big fan and I will always continue to read Japanese and I'm gonna try to read more Korean horror, so if you have any recommendations, let me know. Or thrillers, I know I keep saying that. I've known for a while that I've been a fan of Japanese horror books, but I think that this opens a new door for Korean horror for me, so I'm really excited, and I'm glad that I got to do this in a vlog. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any recommendations for me, leave them in the comments down below. If you have any requests of books or vlogs you'd like to see me read or do something similar like this too in the future please let me know in the comments down below if you haven't already feel free to subscribe to my channel we can become friends talk about books horrifying books thrilling books romance books manga all that good fun stuff and with that being said i hope you're having a great day night morning afternoon wherever you are and i will see you in my next video bye